Hey there, I am Parth Doshi, exploring the field of RPA and sharing my learnings with you by making videos. So let me give you a quick overview of what we'll be doing in this video. So in this video, we'll be using UiPath forms. Now, instead of creating one form, we are going to create two forms and invoke the other form, other form from the first one. So what we'll do is we'll create a login form. We can say with the username and password, we won't validate the data, but just to understand the concept, how we can do that, we'll create two fields in one form. We'll give a login button option. So when user clicks on login button, the second form will appear wherein he can type his details like name, phone number, and email ID. So we'll use this particular small use case and see how we can invoke a one form from the other form. So let's get started. Now I've created two XAML files. One is form one and the other is form two. Now the form one is going to be the sequence for the first one where we'll be creating a login page. So let me remain this as login form, the sequence name. This is a best practice so that you know every time which sequence is used for what login. So now also to use this form uh, particular activity, you need to install uipart.form activities from the manage packages. Now I've done this, let me drag create form. The title is display name is login page. And also we can give a title. So we are going to give it as login page click on OK. Now open the form designer. Also always keep a notepad file open with you so that you can copy the field key to access the data outside the form. Text field, this is going to be user ID, field key, you need to copy this and save. So paste it over here. After that, you need to go to advance and drag a one for password. I think we have it here only. Oh yeah, we have the basic components. So the password, the field key, copy this, save. The notepad file. Now, what we want is on clicking of submit, it should close this form and open a new form. So for that, on the submit button, the field key, add another value. And here what you need to do is close on submit, give it as true. So when submit is clicked, it will close the form. Also copy this particular field key and keep it with us. Let me save this. Also we'll make these fields required from the user. So you need to go to validation required, save. Password validation required, save. Also here is like we can give a constraint. So minimum length should be four. We can give four. Maximum should be 10. And we'll display error message. Please enter password of four to 10 characters. So if the user has typed so this is like a validation you can give to your fields. So if you want the password length to be four or 10 or between them, you can do in this way. So let me click on save, we can preview it. Let's also change the size, I think 200. No, this let me keep it as 400. And this can be 200. This we can change it to I think, yeah, this looks proper. We can, we have themes, so we can change the theme to some dark theme maybe. I think this looks good. Okay, this is perfect. Save and close this form. Now we'll first create our other form and then we'll do the invoking part. So here also drag a form, 
keyword title registration details okay so now open the form a name field give this as name validation it is required field key copy the field save give this with us now the second one we need is an email drag this validation is required field key is going to be email copy this save over here and the last one is a phone number validation it is required field key copy and keep it with us now save preview this is pretty much proper size change the team save this and close now what we have done is we have created two forms now we are going to display a message box wherein we'll show the registration details to the user so for that you need to go to form fields collection copy the field key name create an argument this is going to be of type out since we are taking it from the form string and also the variable should be of the same name as of the first one the argument copy the email paste the email over here out create a variable email and that's it now the last field we are remaining is the phone number copy create an argument string Again, no. I can create a variable. That's it. Now, what we'll do is we'll display a message box. So let me drag a message box over here. We'll put the text. So it is going to be name colon plus the name plus environment dot new line so it will just give me the output on the second line second one is going to be email id colon again the email variable again environment dot new line plus sign then we have phone number we are going to give this as phone number that's it now we need to make the changes over here so what we are going to do is on click of submit we are going to invoke another form so in selected button you need to create a variable selected button so this is the variable now drag a switch case over here i will tell you why is it required I could just directly do it, but what if you have multiple buttons over there? Also, let me open the form designer. And we need to make a small change over here. Submit. Now, instead of submit, this is going to be a login button. Field key, we are going to change it to login. Copy. And save. Save this form. Close. So here we are going to put selected button. Change from this to string. That's it. Now add a new case. Now this is our field key. So we are going to put that. And on click of that, we are going to invoke this particular file. So we'll use an invoke workflow activity. Drag this over here. Close this part. select form to open input arguments so 
so here the arguments are going to be okay now let us save this we'll invoke that workflow over here that form will open while we'll filling the details and see what the output we are getting so let me save this and let's run the file and see whether we are getting the desired output or not and if there are any errors we see we'll see how we can solve them So we have the login page, user ID, let me put as par, password is fast. So as you can see, the error, PASS4 on 3B error. So I'm putting it as password, clicking on login. This form got closed, now the other forms will open. So we have the another form over here. So on click of that button, we were able to get the next form, par, and let me put this my email id gmail.com now submit now according to us the output should be a message box here we have it a message box with all the details now instead of this message box what you can do is you can write the data to an excel file if you need or whatever is your application so this is how we can invoke a UI path form from a UI path form using invoke workflow. So we created two forms. Now, if you want to access the data of this form and continue some other process after this workflow, you can create the arguments over here. So the ones which are as this as variable, you can create them as argument and access that in this particular workflow. But since I'm messaging, uh, displaying the message box here itself, I don't need to create an argument. So let's do a quick recap of what we did in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we basically created two XAML files, one which was form one, form two. Then we created our both the forms. One was the login, then the other one was registration. Obviously, we didn't do any validation for the login, but we created that form. On click of login button, the next form got opened and the previous form got closed and we were able to display the data outside the form using a message box. Thank you for watching the complete video. Please do check out the playlist of UI path forms if you would like to learn more concepts of UI path forms. Also, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and press the bell icon to stay updated to all the new videos I upload. Thank you.